Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, eliminate maximum number of monsters. This is from today's leak code contest. So we're given two arrays, an array of distance, an array of speed as well. Both of these are gonna be the same size and each position of these two arrays represents a monster. So we're, the distance array represents the initial distance that a monster is away from the city and the speed represents the speed that that monster is traveling towards the city. Every monster will be at least a distance of greater than zero away from the city. And we're starting at minute zero. And at every minute, including minute zero, we can choose any monster from the array. So let's take a look at this example. So we have three monsters, a monster that's one distance away, three distance, and four distance away. And each of these monsters is traveling at a speed of one uh, mile per minute or whatever, or meters per minute. And we, at every minute, including minute zero, we can eliminate any of these monsters. And we want to return the maximum number of monsters that we can eliminate before any of the monsters reaches the city. And if it's possible, we might be able to delete or we might be able to eliminate all of the monsters, in which case we can return n the size of the array. Now, the first solution that comes to my mind with this problem is a sorting approach. So the overall time complexity can be n log n. And I think since we can do a sorting approach, we could probably also do a heap ap approach, which I think worst case would also be n log n. But in some cases, in which case we don't eliminate every single monster, would actually run a little bit better than n log n. But I'm just going to stick to the sorting approach because it's a little bit simpler. And this, this solution does pass on leak code, but there might be a linear time solution. I'm not sure. If there is, feel free to suggest it in the comments. But this is the first solution that I came up with. So why not just run a simulation, right? We're starting at minute zero. So let's start at minute zero and then go to minute one and then go to minute two and then go to minute three. And at every single minute, let's eliminate one of the monsters, right? Which monster are we going to eliminate first? Well, are we going to use it based on the distance that it's away or well, we don't we can't do that because some of the monsters might be traveling faster than others. So why don't we for every single monster actually calculate in a different array? Let's call it minute reached in this array for every single monster. We're going to calculate at what minute is this monster going to reach the city? So let's look at monster one. It's one distance away and traveling at a speed of one. So after one minute, or in other words, the distance divided by the speed after one minute, that monster is going to reach the city. Next monster three divided by four. That's going to, that means in three minutes at minute three, it's going to reach the city. The last one, four divided by one. That means at minute four, that monster is going to reach the city. So let's run through every single position in this array, and we'll be keeping track of what current minute we're at. At the first position, we'll be at minute zero. At the next position, we'll be at minute one. Next, at minute two, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it kind of matches up nicely. The index is basically the minute that we're at. Notice how this array is already sorted, but if it wasn't, we would have to sort it, which would take n log n. Why do we have to sort it? Because we want to eliminate the, the monster that's going to reach the city first, right? This is the first monster that's going to reach the city. We want to eliminate it, then go to the next monster that's going to reach the city, eliminate it, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, what happens if we had two monsters that are both going to reach the city at minute one, something like this, right? Well, at this point, we'll be at minute zero. So this monster is going to reach it, the city at minute one. So that's OK. We can eliminate this. But now in this position, we are at minute one. So if we're at minute one and this monster reaches the city at minute one, does that mean the monster reaches the city before we can eliminate it? Well, this is an edge case and they tell us, yes, if the monster reaches the city exactly at the start of the minute, it counts as a loss. That means the monster did reach the city. So if we had a case like this, where this monster reaches the city at the same time that we can eliminate it, then we lose, right? So in, in, in a case like this, what would we say? Well, basically we would say, okay, we were only allowed to eliminate one monster. Right? We were able to eliminate this monster, but we couldn't eliminate the second one. So we return one in that case. But in this example, we're gonna see that we can actually eliminate all of them because at minute zero, uh, this minute is less than this uh, 
the minute reached, so we can eliminate it. Now we're at minute one. One is less than three. That means we can eliminate this before it reaches the city. Now we're at minute two. We can eliminate four before it reaches the city at minute two, right? So we were able to eliminate all of these. In this case, we can return three. And this was a pretty simplified example, but basically all the things I mentioned, that one edge case we have to worry about, incrementing the minute by one each time, and of course, sorting this minute reached input array. Well, it's not an input array. This is an array that we're actually building, but sorting it, this is going to be used for every single example. And we'll be able to solve this in n log n time, O of n extra space. That being said, we can now jump into the code. Now we can get into the code. Like I said, the first thing we're going to do is convert the two input arrays to basically the minute that each monster is going to reach the uh, city. So let's iterate through both distance and speed at the same time. In Python, you can do that pretty easily like this but we could do it with an index also if we wanted to. So now let's compute the minute that this particular monster is gonna reach the city. So D divided by S. Now, what if we had an example, something like this? A monster was three distance away, but the speed it was traveling at was two. In that case, we'd get three divided by two, which is gonna be 1.5. So in this case, we want to round this up to two because we're only allowed to eliminate each monster at an even at an actual minute, right? Zero, one, or two. If it reached at minute 1.5, then we're gonna say at minute two, we should be able to eliminate it before minute two. So we're gonna convert this 1.5 to two. So when we cal calculate the minute, we're gonna say math.ceiling d divided by s. And then for each one of these, we're just gonna append it to the minute reached array. And so that's phase one building this array. And the next part is gonna be actually calculating the results. So of course we want to sort this minute reached array and we're gonna have our result initially at zero. This is the number of monsters we can actually eliminate. So now let's go through every single position in the minute reached array. So for minute in range, length of minute reached. And the minute, in this case, the variable minute, refers to the index that we're at in this, but it also refers to the current minute. We start at minute zero and keep iterating. And so if this minute is less than the value in minute reached, meaning that we can eliminate this minute before, or actually let's do the opposite. If this minute is greater than or equal to the minute that this monster is going to reach the city. In that case, we have to stop, right? That means this is a monster that we can't eliminate before it reaches the city, in which case we're going to stop and immediately return our result variable. If it's not the case, meaning if this minute is actually less than the minute that this monster reaches the city, then we can actually increment our result by one and then continue to the next position in the array. At the end, if we were able to eliminate every monster, we can go ahead and return result, which will basically be the entire length of the array. And as usual, I had a couple typos. So let's update the name of this minute reached and update the name of this. We define this as min reach, so we have to use it as min reach. But other than that, the code is correct. And if I scroll down a little bit, you can see that yes, this does get accepted in this contest. Who knows, maybe there's a linear time solution. If there is, please let me know in the comments, but I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.